Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. I want to do an overhaul of our whole steel production system and add in a bunch of new things for making metal stuff. And also some things for storing liquid, such as all the creosote oil. If you remember, I put five separate tanks of creosote oil up there to suck out of it, and those got full and I had to make five more, and they just don't hold nearly as much as I need them to. So I'm going to do a whole overhaul on a bunch of stuff. I'm going to make three metal presses. Uh, maybe arc furnace. I actually need to make the metal presses before I can even make the arc furnace. I'm gonna make a couple tanks to hold fluid, one for creosote, and I think one for water, I'm thinking. And I'm gonna make three more coke ovens to supplement the one that we have, so we'll have four in total. And I'm also going to make an upgraded version. Um, I think I need to make the metal presses first, but once I make the metal presses, I'll be able to make an upgraded version of the, the uh, furnace that we have up there, the coke furnace. Blast Furnace? Yeah, Blast Furnace. So I'll make an upgraded version of the Blast Furnace, one that allows me to just put stuff in it automatically, take stuff out automatically, and it also will allow me to make these Blast Furnace preheaters. It will accept these, and these use RF to basically heat it up faster and process metal faster. So the idea is to make steel faster. So our Blast Furnace will make steel faster, and our four Coke ovens will be able to make four times the amount of, of cold Coke. And I've also got most of the stuff here ready to make a couple furnaces. But before we get to any of that, I just want to do something real quick. Someone suggested a way I can make this whole place look better. Because you know I've got this line of spice racks connecting the two sides. Which is kind of ugly. So, what they suggested and what I like is apparently you can... I think the fridges will form a multi-block structure and just become a larger fridge. Yeah, it does. Nice. So how about I just put one on each side? And then have the spice rack as just kind of a thing up top, but not some weird line that goes up top and then down and then over and... I think it'll look better. Like that alone should do it. And now the spice racks don't look so bizarre. Uh, this is... an even. Yeah, on this side, it's like that. There we go. Okay, and does that still work? Yes, it does. You can still access the other side. Cool. Much better. Um, I guess just for sake of making it more symmetrical, I'll put those there. I could get rid of the torches, but then it'd be so dark in here. Yeah, that's good. Oh, um, they also suggested that the oven has some spots for tools. Um, you don't need to put them there, but... Oh, give me that. But I think they visually show up when you put them there. Yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so let's grab some more. It's got room for, what, that? That. And that. Oh, I guess the image they have there is just a suggestion. I guess it doesn't actually have to be that specific item. But yeah, there we go. Pretty cool. Alright, let's get to it. So one of the things I'm going to need is a lot of room. A lot more room than I have now. Everything that I'm going to make is going to be quite large. I mean, you can just imagine. This Coke oven, there's going to be four of them. The blast furnace is, I think it's going to be about the same size, that won't change, but we need room for four of these, one of this, two, um, what were they called, fluid towers, whatever, which are probably about as large as this and a little bit taller, and room for three metal presses, and some furnaces, <laughs> so I'm going to need to make a lot of room. So I need to carve out a new part of terrain, a very large part of terrain. So let me figure out where I'm going to put this stuff, and I'll be right back. I think I'm going to carve a big space of land out from about here over to that pathway. Pretty big. Should be enough. Because I could keep just extending this platform out this way, uh, but then I just have a really big line 
and it takes kind of long to get to it, so I'd rather kind of come around and kind of circle around the base so that it's a bit closer. Oh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cut down some beautiful trees. Sorry, maple. Sorry, dark oak. I try to think of another texture I can make the platform. I don't really like this one. I was thinking of doing something really radical and using <gasps> two different block types. So I was thinking of using this kind of like white chisel thing, maybe as lines around the design of the floor, but I don't like how it looks. Let's try something else. Yeah, okay, that's better. So we've got two different types here, this one and this one. They're very similar. One's embossed and one's indented. But the... Um, but I don't remember which one was which, but I like, I think having most of them like this, and then having this as maybe a sort of pathway through the thing might look okay. I'm gonna try it out. Got the basic shape laid out. I think this will be enough room. Um, I think I might extend the back a little bit more, actually. Let's add some feet to this thing. Something so huge and heavy, it's gotta have some support. Hmm... I don't like how they're irregular. Oh, gah. See, gotta be careful with the cobalt hammer. Just put that away for a second. Much better. Appeases my sense of order. Um, I think I'm gonna craft some stairs here. I'll just put this down just as a rough kind of blocking out of it. Those will be stairs along with this. Now, let's put down the other texture. I actually think I'm going to hold off on the other texture, because I do want it to be sort of a walkway type thing, but the problem is, without putting down the machines, I don't really know where the walkway would be. So I'm going to wait to do that till after the machines are down. Just slanted this off here, a little bit more rounded. I put the matching material here, and I'm just going to go ahead and chisel it so it's got stairs. Oh, I forgot to mention we're also going to make a cobble gen in this episode. Got everything ready to make the mining upgrades. But anyway, that's gonna wait. Okay, um... Hello, Bat. Squeak, squeak. What shall we make first? I could go with the tanks, or the coke ovens, or the metal presses. Um... Let's do the metal presses. So that should be everything to make three metal presses. Metal presses allow you to do some things faster, some things more efficiently, and <laughs> this bat really likes me. And some things you just can't do in any other way. I think I already mentioned the steel plate. Yeah, the only way to make a steel plate is with a metal press mold for a plate in a metal press. Can't make it just using a hammer like most stuff. And some other things, like I was looking at making high voltage immersive engineering stuff, because right now all my lines are low voltage, which has very low thro throughput. And for that, you need steel wire. And for that, well, okay, you definitely need the metal press for it anyway, because you need to make a steel plate and then cut it. Um, but you can make it more efficiently by putting it in a metal press. Out of one steel ingot, you can get two wires, whereas if you cut it, you get one. And steel's pretty hard to make, and it's pretty slow, so you really don't want to be wasteful with it. I wonder if... I wonder if you knew the metal press to make all versions of the steel plate. Block of steel, cutting machine, metal former... Oh, never mind. Okay, you can... You actually can make a steel plate. Just not an immersive engineering steel plate. Hmm. Well, anyway... The metal presses will be good. So, to make them, heavy machinery, metal press, they're quite small. Oops, slow, slow down. So, scaffold, scaffold, red thing, some belts and a piston, then engineering block. Okay, easy enough. So, where should I put them? How do I want to orient them? Do I want them to go to the side? Or kind of forwards? I guess, 
kind of forwards. So let's get everything down here. I'll give each one a bit of extra room, so it's this. Two spots. That's conveyor belt, conveyor belt, conveyor belt, conveyor belt. I don't think the orientation of the blocks matter. And this. Then on top of that, a heavy engineering block. I should do it. <laughs> what did I hit to make it happen? What did I hit? Maybe orientation does matter? Well, I'm supposed to face down. Have these go the same direction? I don't get it. How did that one complete? Okay, hold on. So looking at it from this direction, it's facing down, and the conveyor belts are going to the right. Still won't do it? Oh. Facing down, to the right. Yeah, I- wow, I'm surprised, I didn't think it mattered. And I swear, for some other things I've tried, it doesn't matter. Oh, maybe it maybe it matters because that actually decides which way it goes. It looks like you can actually change which way it goes because these are going different ways. Yeah, okay, so I guess... Probably the belts just have to be going the same way, because that's what it uses to determine which way it's going to be going. I definitely want these to be going consistent ways, so let's flip this around. Now they're all going to the right. Yeah. Alright. They all need power and stuff, of course. But there's my basic metal press line. Let's... Let's get this... the coke ovens going. break this. So that's enough for three. I'm going to have four going because I'm going to tear down the one we have up here. I think I'll put the coke ovens here. Oh wait, that's just three. I just realized that's only three. Well, anyway, that's fine. I will put another one. Um, hmm. If I put it here, it's going to block the face of this one. Not that it actually matters, it really doesn't. I'll move it over a little bit, like this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Next, I'm going to make the huge tanks. That's going to hold water and creosote. I think I'll put it... It's, it's a 3x3. Three three. I mean, it's taller, but... It, uh, yeah, 3x3 three by, three by something. Um, I could line it up with this. Leaving like a 2 gap here. I guess that's alright. So it'll be a 3x3, three three, leave one gap. So there'll be one gap in between them. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, so it is... It's got posts like that.
And one metal block in the center of each. And after that, you kind of just build it up like this with a hollow inside. And I think we do that three times. So one, two, three. And then the final one is solid. Yeah. There we go. Got a big old fluid tank. So each one of these holds 512 buckets. For comparison's sake, these tanks up here that I've been using hold 16. So these hold a lot. Let me get the other one built. Man, this place looks so industrial, doesn't it? So cool. Okay, um... So... Let me just check something. To upgrade the blast furnace... What is it? Blast? Yes, I need to make reinforced blast bricks, which is just normal blast bricks with steel plates. So I could either make the industrial craft, steel plates, or make the immersive engineering ones, which would require me to hook up the uh, power to these. I think I want to test these things out, so I'm going to hook up their power. Hooked up two of them, and then this one couldn't reach all the way over there to get the next one, so I put a pole here. Alright, now they've all got power. Let's test them out. Let's grab some steel and make some steel plates. So I'm going to need 27 steel plates. Now, if I remember right, I think putting stuff on the metal presses manually is kind of funky. I think it works better if you put an extra conveyor belt at the end of it, rather than try to throw it on this conveyor belt to get put into it. Oh, wait, I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit. I can't just put it through and make a steel plate, right? I think I need to make a mold. Yeah, I need a metal press mold plate. So, for that... Oh, you need steel plates to make a metal press mold plate. <laughs> okay, copper plate and steel plate, so I am going to have to make the industrial graft plates. Alright, let me get that going. Oh, I need to upgrade my EU power system so bad. Look at, look at how slow this is. It's getting like no power at all, and I still don't understand why. But the issue is definitely, like I don't understand specifically what is taking up power, but the issue is definitely with not my power generation, but the whole just EU subsystem, because the EU subsystem is ultimately, well, not ultimately, I guess ultimately it's supplied all the way over there at the power generation, but, you know, up the chain, up the river when it gets converted to EU, comes from this basic energy cube, and this thing is totally full, it's not running out of power at all. This battery struggles, it's pretty much even slash slightly 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 losing power so I think it's partially the bat box and mostly just that these tin wires are garbage like I'm tempted to just upgrade it right now because this is going to take forever just to get four steel plates I've only gotten one <laughs> um let's see what it would take to upgrade my EU system Okay, I'm putting a full stop to my production of all the machines over there until I can upgrade our EU system. I was hoping to avoid doing that, but I think we're going to have to use EU systems at least a bit, no matter what. Eventually, I'm pretty sure we will have to use them, so I might as well get a pretty good system going. So right now, I'm on low tier, uh, power tier 1, where everything's 32 EU per tick. I could go up to here. These are basically the batteries. The bat box is what I've got. The sesu is tier 2, it's 128 EU per tick, which isn't that much better than 32. If I'm running a bunch of machines, and especially if I'm going to overclock them, I'm going to need more than that. So I figure, why not just go for this? The MFE, power tier 3. 512 EU per tick. I think that should be enough for the foreseeable future. There is this, which is even more, but that's... Uh, yeah, no thanks. I don't even know if I can make it. I actually, I could make it, but it's not worth it. I don't need anything that powerful just yet. 
So double insulated gold cable, I've made that, I can do it. Basic machine casing, I can make it. A little bit annoying because of these sturdy casings, but I can totally do that. The only kind of weird one is the energy crystals, but it turns out that those aren't actually too hard. They're just made from putting energy and dust inside of a compressor. And that is made with glowstone, redstone, that's easy. Red quartz, I've made that, that's just quartz and redstone. And then diamond dust, that's the only expensive part. I've just got to crush up some diamonds. Which I'm sure I can do just by throwing a diamond in the crusher, right? Let me just test that to make sure. Because that showed me not using the crusher, but that was probably just that particular variant of diamond dust. Let me see if I can get a different variant by doing this. Yes, it's running. Yeah. In fact, it's even industrial craft. Diamond dust. So I'm going to make that. And along with that, I'm going to have to convert the power somehow, because that would explode my current machines. It's just too much power. And I've actually got a couple options for that. I could just make another transformer. Just add another transformer to this chain. But then I'm kind of back at the same issue where I'm not actually supplying as much power as I'd like. So what I could do instead is I could, you can actually put an upgrade in these things to increase their power tiers so that they won't explode when you hook them up to higher power things. So I might do that. Let me um, let me see how expensive it is, though. These overclocker upgrades were really annoying to make, frankly. So... Yeah, increase energy input tier by one. Increases storage. Ejector. Yeah, so this one. Uh, oh, Christ. That is... nasty. <laughs> Just to make one of these, keep in mind to upgrade this from Tier 1 to Tier 3, which is what I'm going to be using, I would need two of these, and each one of those is going to take two Transformers. Ouch. Hmm. Huh. Then again, the transformer itself isn't too bad. I'm going to need a lot of sturdy casings. It's not like I don't have the stuff to make it, though. Yeah, you know what? I can just make a lot of sturdy casings. It's okay. I have tons of stuff that I've gotten from mining, because of all my new mining tools. And I no longer have to go this annoying route of making this to make a single redstone gear. I can now actually just make four using redstone alloy, because we can make redstone alloy and the metal alloy using redstone and silicon. How the hell do I get silicon? Okay, yeah, I can't really make silicon, which means I can't make the redstone alloy, which means I'd have to go the really slow, annoying route, which I have the resources to do. It would just be slow and annoying, so I'm, I'm just going to hold off on that. I think that's too much to get into with our current capabilities right now. I can't really mass produce sturdy casings that easily. So I'm just going to make a... Um, I'll just make the battery and then I'll just make the transformer. Aw, look who tried to shoot me. Seems like they're stuck going into the crusher. You need some help there? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Alright, I've got everything ready to hopefully do a little bit of a not really an overhaul of our power of our EU power system, but at least a little bit of an upgrade. So got everything together for the MFE, the large battery, and everything together for the medium voltage transformer. Now this might not actually solve any problems. I'm not sure. Because we're still going to be ultimately limited by the transformer or the bat box. I'm assuming... It puts out 32 EU per tick. This thing outputs 32 EU per tick. Okay, so they both, yeah, they both output 32 EU per tick. So this might not actually change anything. I, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Let's just, let's just try it. <clears throat> okay, so instead of the power going from the basic energy cube to the LV transformer, we want it to go. 
directly to the battery. Oh, this is gonna look ugly. Now, how does this battery work? I always forget. Does it have just one output and everything else is an input? Yes. So this is should be the output and everything else should be an input. Um, and we should be able to just put this right next to it, right? Should start filling up? Yeah, it's filling up. And I think this thing itself can't output enough to fully take advantage of this thing. Not that that's a problem. I don't think it will be. Um, yeah, so its max output is only 80 EU per tick. Wow, it's actually using up enough power to actually drain this. So it's not going to get that much faster. Even that, but... Yeah, yeah we'll see if this works. <laughs> um, I'm just going to use just raw gold cable. I can't use the tin cable to come out of here because I need stronger cable. I can take more EU per tick. And I could turn this into coils, but if I turn into coils like this, like the tin wire coil, they don't have to make connectors and stuff, and like, eh, forget it. I'm just messing around right now. I'm not too concerned about it. So we want to go from that to this. Let's put a little platform here. We want to step this down in power. Now, how does this work? So this is the input. I got electrocuted. Oh, right, because they're not insulated wires. Okay, yeah, whatever. Yep, looks like it's set up right already. Input high, output slow. Okay, so now we just put this back into place. Not long enough, of course. It's all right. We've got some more in here. Please don't explode. Good. It didn't explode. Is this thing filling up with power? It is. Sort of. Yeah, that didn't really solve anything, did it? It is getting power, so this is working. Ow. <laughs> wow. If you get anywhere even near it, it's uninsulated. It hurts. But ultimately, we're still limited by the bat box. Crap. I could make this system a little bit better by moving all this stuff a little bit closer to the machine, so there's less transmission loss, I suppose. Um, I feel like one of the problems that might be happening is we might be losing a lot of power through transmission loss because of this one very long line. So what if I just snip that? It's just a little snippy. Because we're not using that thing. I don't even remember what I disconnected. How's the middle former doing? Let's see if it's going to choke. Eh, it's still going down really fast. But it's going down usably fast. Like before it was taking literally like minutes to form a single piece of metal. I'm pretty sure even when this bottoms out, it's still going to go at at least a decent rate. Yeah, so I haven't really solved any problems at all. That didn't make any improvement at all. <laughs> so that sucks. But I have more infrastructure in place for when I do do a proper overhaul. A proper overhaul is going to require me to make the power tier ups and just switch everything over to higher voltage. I think that's the only way. I mean, I suppose it's technically not the only way. Technically, what I could do is I could make a whole bunch of LV transformers and use multiple outputs of the um, medium voltage transformer to go to multiple LV transformers and then run separate lines for them and then only connect like one machine to each LV transformer so each one has its own 32 EU per tick, but... I'm not doing that. That blows. That feels like just a band-aid solution. Anyway, it's good enough for now, so now I can make the things I needed to make, so I'll be right back. Alright, now we should be able to make the mold. 
There we go. Let's put this on one of the machines. And let's see how this works. Again, I think it's a bit funky. I'm just going to try throwing it all down. I think it'll take them as it needs them. After it finishes one, it'll take another. Okay, so yeah, it's working okay. Obviously messy without any sort of a storage system to input and output them. But you can see it's going at a decent rate. All done, so let's go ahead and make the improved blast furnace. So take all the blast bricks from the old furnace, the crude one. Mix that with steel plates. Mm. Oh. Oh, I think it just needs to be in a specific pattern, right? Yeah, okay. I wasn't expecting that. It's. I thought it was an unshaped recipe. There's shaped and unshaped recipes? Ones that have to be in a in an exact area inside of the crafting grid and ones that don't? Since it's just two ingredients, often those are not shaped and you can just put them wherever and it works. But this one is not, not the case. It's gotta be exactly there. Wait, what? The hell? That was weird. I tried to complete them all, but it did like a third of them and then switched to a different recipe? <laughs> anyway. So with that, we can make the improved furnace. I think I'll put it right here. So it's pretty much the same as it was before. Two gap, one gap, one gap. Um, I'm gonna give this one a little bit more of a gap than one. I'm gonna give it a two gap because we're gonna have the, the heaters on either side of it. This isn't gonna stick out too much, is it? Keep in mind there's gonna be a heater like here. No, that'll be all right. That was a mistake. <laughs> I need to be on top. So the only change is I think we need a hopper in the very center top of it, like that. And that should do it. Aha! Much fancier. They get so much smaller when you form it. It's really strange. But yeah, much prettier looking. Let's... Um, let's get the heaters going. Got everything ready to craft them right here. Just a bunch of iron sheet metal and a couple external heaters, which is uh, relatively simple. And I don't think I have enough connectors to connect this. No, I, th I think, yeah, I used up all my low voltage connectors. So I'll have to make more, but I'll put these into place for now. Yeah, check that out. Pretty cool, huh? Just gotta give each of these things power. And it should be significantly faster. And then you can set up a whole entry and exit system for taking stuff out. Um, I think you put stuff in through the front, and then I think the finished steel and also the slag, I think, also comes out the, the back. Got them made. Let's get them into place. And let's... Let's put some scaffolding around here so I can actually reach up there. Because in the past, what I've done... When I was when I was not playing this mod pack, but before I started recording and playing other mod packs and stuff... Uh, I would always... Just pillar up when I need to dig it up somewhere. And then just break the whole thing down. And it gets pretty old doing that all the time, and I figure... Any area where I need to frequently get up, I should probably just put a scaffolding there. And then I can just climb up at any time. And it looks appropriately industrial. Ooh. This isn't gonna reach, is it? Nope, but I think I've got... Yep, yeah, I've got a wooden post left. Good. And a relay. Let's go from there to... Where should the other pole be? Don't want it to be in the way. I could put it up here. Actually, it wouldn't be able to hit the other side. Blocked by the chimney of that place. Hmm. Maybe I should actually come from here.
Even that wouldn't work. Dang. I'm going to need multiple pulls. All right, hold on. There we go. This should do. Just went from there to that corner, and then from that corner to here. I would have liked to put another one in that corner to make it look a little bit better, but I, I didn't feel like making the extra pull. All right. Filling up with power. Nice. Now, let's see how fast this thing is. I don't know if it's going to be super obvious how much faster it is, because I don't think you get a percentage. But let's throw some coal coke and block of iron. Let's see. Let's look at the percentage. Oh, I know that's way faster. That's got to be at least twice as fast. And that's a block of iron, so that's doing nine steel at the same time. Nice. Okay. Um, for now, I think I'm just going to throw some chests in front of it and behind it to supply it with stuff. I don't think we need anything fancier just yet. Should be fine. Oh, never mind. Okay, so I just remember this wrong. It doesn't put all the outputs at the back. It puts slag specifically at the back. Steel goes out the front. And iron and coal coke are fed in through the top. Okay, that makes some sense. So yeah, I can just leave this here. And it should... Oh, it's almost done. Should output. There we go. Yeah, cool. Hmm, well, I don't think I want to just put a chest up there on top. That would look pretty ridiculous. So I guess I'll make an actual system for that. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. For now, I want to do... I guess I'll pump out the creosote. Yeah. So I could do that using just the extra utility stuff that I have right now. That would completely work. But it would be a bit more immersive to use the pumps and the pipes from immersive engineering itself. The thing is, though, I don't know how expensive they are. So let's see. Oop. Oh, my God, I can't type. Immersive pump. Let's see what the pump takes. Iron, fluid pipe, iron. Okay, that's easy. Fluid pipe is a bunch of iron. It's going to take a lot of iron. But that's not that big of a deal. That's fine. It's more immersive. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to make all the fluid pipes, and I'm going to make fluid pumps. Got everything created. All right, let's get these things installed. So the pump will suck up anything from directly beneath it. So it's got to go on top. So I'll put it at the center of each one. Each one also requires power. Okay, so we've got power now. They're not active yet, though. They need a lever to be active. I guess I'll put this on the front of each one. I'm not going to activate them just yet, though. Um, and now let's actually hook them up to one of these. So I'm going to use one for creosote and I guess eventually one for water. I don't need to hook up any sort of a water system just yet, though. Nor do I ever really have to, but I, I feel like having a centralized water location instead of having a bunch of separate aqueous accumulators all over the place. So I'll do that eventually. So I can output from any one of these sides that doesn't have a, uh, a lever on it. And we can go into either the top or the bottom of the fluid tanks. I'm going to go into the top though. feels more appropriate to enter the top and extract out the bottom. Let's do this. So uh, you can see it's kind of connecting all over the place. We can fix that in just a little bit with the engineer's hammer, so don't worry. It's going to be a little bit messy trying to get this to work. Um, I'm going to put down some of these to make this a lot easier. No, nope, that's not where I wanted you. Why don't you want to go on the side there? 
I don't understand. Why don't these want to... There we go. That's what I wanted. Why, why wouldn't you do that here? Don't go on top. What's your problem? I don't get it. That is really weird. Okay. You can be there if you want. Off to the side. And up one. And over. <laughs> he really doesn't want to go on the side. Okay. There. It's connected. So I'm just going to show you how this works and then I'll how this works and then I'll connect the rest of them off camera. So when it connects somewhere you don't want, you can just hit it with a hammer. Disconnects it. Don't want to connect there or there. Yes. Um. Oh, also one thing I forgot. You have to specify which of these sides of the fluid pump you want to be input or output. So blue is um, input. Yeah, blue is input. Orange is output. And this is nothing. So we want it to output. So blue, orange, blue, orange. Now I'll put into the pipes. Okay, gonna set up the rest of these. There we go, got it set up. So all three of them connect to this line and connect up to this one and go into here. Okay, so let's see if this actually works. So right now this thing is full of a bunch of creosote oil. When I flip this, the pump should start working and this should flow out. Ooh, look at how fast that was. Wow, these things are beautiful. Should be the case for the rest of them. Yep. <laughs> that is beautiful. Pumps are keeping up with the power no problem. I don't think they use too much power. And now this thing, as you can see, it doesn't tell you exactly like in millibuckets, but you can see it's a little bit full. I don't know, it's probably like 5% full or something. And I think the color of the fluid is represented by the color of the bar. That's kind of the color of creosote. I should probably make a plaque or something like that though, though to show exactly what the fluid is, because just color alone isn't really that great at being able to tell fluids apart, especially if you get a bunch of fluids. But yeah, there we go. Man, this is looking so cool. So industrial, industrious. Pipes and fluids, and these are just gonna produce tons and tons of cold coke. The moment I don't have any system to pull the cold coke out, I could do that at some point. I'm not too concerned about doing that, though. For now, I can just bulk put it in. I just wanted to make more of everything and make it faster, and especially automate the creosote extraction, because that's the thing that fills up super fast. Okay, and with that, I think we're... Uh, that's most of what I wanted to do for all the industrial stuff. There's a little bit more, though. Let me clean up my inventory. Alright, I want to try making a new type of furnace that I haven't made before. Because I was looking at how to make upgraded furnaces, right? I want one that, want, want one that runs on power so I don't have to worry about fuel. And I want it to be fast. Well, I've got the electric furnace from IC2, but obviously that's not running too hot with my current EU power system, so I was looking at other things. and. Um, the one that I was typically going to use, and I most commonly use, is the redstone furnace from Thermal Expansion, but it would appear that's been disabled. Or at least it doesn't show the recipe. Hopefully it's not just a broken display of the recipe, but it actually works, like the Tinker's uh, tool table thing, the tier one that I couldn't could craft, but the recipe wouldn't show up for it. But I'm going to assume it was disabled on purpose, and they're forcing you to use more interesting furnaces that you might not have used before, such as the powered furnace, which I've never used before. It's from Actually Editions. That's the one that has the atomic reconstructor that shoots a laser and transforms stuff. Um, apparently, it uses 25 RF per tick, which is not bad at all. That's very reasonable. It doesn't say anything about speed, so I'm assuming it's the same speed as a normal furnace. However, it can smelt two items at the same time. So it should be double the speed of a normal furnace. So I'm going to make two of these things. Uh, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, I've got everything prepared, just some furnaces, cobblestone, these iron casings are super easy to make. But what I need to make is anori crystals and basic coils. Basic coils require restonia. So basically I'm going to use an atomic reconstructor on blocks of iron and blocks of redstone. And that will give me the things I need. So let's go try it out. 
Uh, let's see how much power this is going to use. I don't want to run all of it out. Oh, just 400 RF for a whole block? Yeah, easy peasy. So I can just throw them all out here. So, oh. Throw them all. Pew. There we go. How much did that use? Oh, barely used any. Even for the iron. So I transformed the redstone into Restonia. And the iron into a Nori crystal. And you can break each of these down into the individual components that you need. Because you don't need it in block form. The block form just makes it easier to process. And then we need to go to sleep. Because it's getting dark. Okay, now let's make the stuff. So I've got the crystals. Now I need four basic coils. And that should be it. Yeah, let's put it over here. I guess I'll put it along here. Needs power. Clipping. Auto split items off. Okay, yeah, I was wondering how that would work if it does two at one time. Let's turn that on. So if I give it two stone, it should split it automatically. Yep. Nice. I think that that was faster than a normal furnace, too. Let's see. So let me hand it a bunch, see what happens to the power. Yeah, power is easily able to keep up. Not a problem. Oh, wait, it's not processing it, is it? <laughs> it's not. Oh, God, give me all of it. Hmm. It's just textured cobblestone. I thought it would be fine with it, but nope. All right. Hmm, I'm getting a slight net drain, but I'm pretty sure that's because my power system right now is kind of being messed up. Um, I think half of all of my total potential power being transferred through the RF line is being used up on this massive, massive battery, which is still very, very slowly filling up, which is actually draining the basic energy cube. So that thing is a massive drain on my power system. So furnaces should not be a problem. Not after that thing fills up. So let's look at the speed. Let's count it. One, two, three, four. About four seconds. Pretty sure that's faster. Oh, nothing like four cups of tea to keep you going. Just set up some temporary furnaces here, since the electric furnace wasn't working too well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's faster. That took about six seconds compared to around four. Nice. So it is actually faster. Faster and it does double. And it doesn't take any sort of fuel that I have to refill. Excellent. I'm super happy about that. Yeah, look at, all, look at all this industrious industrializing I've done. Really happy with all of it. Okay, what is there left to do? Ah, yes, the cobble gem. Well, let's make these. So it just takes a diamond pickaxe and shovel and an upgrade base. I got two upgrade bases from a quest, if you remember. You don't need two of these. It's just if you use multiple of them, it speeds up the cobble generation. Let's dump a bunch of stuff. Um, and let me think of where I want to put this. Alright, so I'm going to put it right back here because I want the cobble gen to hook directly into the drawer that has cobblestone, which is this one. That way I can just constantly feed into it. So I've made it. It's kind of ugly, but I made it out of cobblestone because I want it to be uh, protected from fire and stuff like that because it's going to have lava inside of it. And also because I'm making cobblestone, so it feels appropriate to make the whole thing out of cobblestone. Just plain old cobblestone. So let's do it. Here's what we're going to need. Mm, I don't like that those are dirt. Let's make 
take this cobble. Alright, so we're gonna have water on one side, and then we need lava on the other. So with water on one side, lava on the other, and a transfer node connected to the cobblestone in between them, and upgrade minings. Boop. Oh, it can only take one at a time. They changed that, I guess. Hmm. Um, yeah, with an upgrade mining, it just generates cobblestone, just like that. I wonder how you make it faster then. See, it used to not be called upgrade mining, it used to be called a world interaction upgrade. And you used to be able to put as many as you could possibly fit into here. So you could put one, two, three, four, five, six. You could put six stacks of 64 world interaction upgrades. It was pretty obscene, but every single one made it collect cobblestone faster. Now you can only put one at a time, so I'm assuming... Um, I'm assuming the upgrade speed, yeah, increase the speed of operations, so this is probably what makes it get cobblestone faster, I'm guessing. But anyway, this is fast enough, it's not like I need that much cobblestone. <laughs> One transfer pipe? What? I meant to get a stack. Right there. So, let's connect out here. That's the cobblestone. And with that, it should be working. We should be just generating infinite cobblestone. Let's go check. 127, 134, yep, it's working. <clears throat> All right, now we pretty much never have to worry about cobblestone again. Definitely won't need to go mining for it. And with the cobblestone being just automated like that, if we do end up needing to, and I, I don't need to at the moment, but if we do end up needing to, I can also set up the whole process chain to give us um, infinite sand and gravel as well. Because what you can do is just take the cobblestone, and throw some of it in the crusher, and that generates gravel. And then if you throw gravel in a crusher, it generates sand. So with this, you can infinitely generate all of that if you need to. But for now, I've got plenty, 400 of that, and... I don't know, some gravel. I don't really use gravel for much. So it's fine just as it is. Alright, well I feel really accomplished. That's... Yeah, that's all of the... Automation machinery stuff I wanted to get done. Uh... Hi. Nice of you to drop by. Can I melt your steel leggings? Yes. No, I can't. Damn it. Aw, oh, we got a bronze plate that's stuck. Partially completed. And now I had to destroy everything. Since I do have the other water uh, world interaction upgrade, I figured I might as well just double my production. Yeah, alright, now we're making double the cobblestone. Let's see how fast that is. There's some... I get weird glee from just producing obscene amounts of cobblestone, even if I don't actually do anything with it. 310. Takes it a minute. It's kind of slow. It's searching through the network. 335. Yeah, that is so fast. Okay. I'm going to try finding the cats again to end the episode. Let me see if I can go to where I originally found them and see if they're still there. Oh, <gasps> On my journey over to where I think the cats were. I'm, my base is here. I'm here right now. I think, if I remember right, the cats were here. Or possibly here. Here or here. I think. So I'm making my, my way over to this water and then I'm gonna boat from here over to there. But, look at this. Tropical garden. New type of garden. I don't have much space. But, um... I, yeah, I could just shove it all in my mining backpack. New stuff. Those are frost gardens. I already got them. Just three. That might not give me all the varieties. 
there any more around here? Oh yeah, there's some over there. Or one over there at least. Got my jet back on, by the way. I want to look for another cluster. Uh, I didn't find any more. But I did find this interesting looking building. It's got a furnace that's going, but actually isn't. And a cake. Nom nom. Oh, I can't finish it. Creepy basement. Ooh. Whoa. It's a lot of stuff. Mostly junk. Statistics. No thanks. Hmm. They're enchanted, but their armor's terrible. Two armor. What does mine do right now? Yeah, it does six armor. Those are really bad. Stone, iron, tempered blade. And nothing compared to my cleaver. Yeah, nothing really worthwhile. Mushroom and a spruce sapling. Let's see what's in the basement. Let's get some torches on. Uh, Christ, how deep are we going? Oh, is this like a... Oh, it's like a dungeon. No thanks, I'm good. Let's take a look at what I got from those plants. So, sesame seeds, ginger, pineapple, bamboo, cantaloupe, cotton, soybean! Yes, I got a soybean! Oh my god! I've been waiting for that for so long, that's gonna unlock the ability for me to get dairy and protein. Sweet. Oh, I see a kitty on the map. There it is. Get my golden lasso. Nice and easy. I could probably catch it if I go fast, but I'll try to be careful. Ah, I'm just going to go for it. Got it! Haha! <laughs> Alright, got one. But it needs a friend. Let me look for another one. Oh, I see another one. It's right below me. Where? Down here? Oh, there it is. Come here, kitty. Oh my god, I got two cats again. Okay, this time I am not going to accidentally let them go. Let me get back to base. Okay, I've got six fishes. And a couple jellyfish and octopus, which unfortunately I can't convert into fish. I can convert that into a slime ball. So I'm going to try to turn these ocelots into domesticated little kitties. Um, I guess for full disclosure, by the way, I should say that I did teleport my way back. I boated there. It took a long time. But I did teleport my way back because I've been recording for like four hours for this episode. And oh, I did not want to take that return journey. Anyway this little place so that they should not be able to escape. Oh, it wants to run. It'll be okay. Whoops. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't, didn't work at all. Hmm. It's possible it can't be in a fleeing state. Maybe it's impossible for it to work in a fleeing state, or I just got very unlucky. What the? Wait, what? Where, where did these fish come from? I thought I just used them all. 
Okay. Yeah, like I just used them all again. I, somehow it duped my fish or something? I don't know. Okay, so I've got to make a bigger one of these so that they have enough room to run away a little bit. So I gotta go do some more fishing. Got six more raw fish. Let's try this again. This time, give them a bit more room. Yeah, I think it's calmed down. I don't see it trying to sprint. <laughs> it's definitely doing circles, though. Okay. Yeah, now it's coming to me. That's exactly what we want. Hey, kitty. Hey, kitty. Come on, kitty. There we go! We got a cat! What was that? Oh! <laughs> the Actually Editions mod adds balls of fur that just randomly come from cats. I think, do balls of fur... Do you use them and they give you stuff? Yeah, you use them and they just have stuff in them. Uh, I don't know what that one had. Probably the stick. Mostly just junk, occasionally something good. Okay. Um, let's try the other one. Yeah, come here. Ah, dang. Didn't work. Alright. I gotta get more fish. There we go. Got our second fish. All right, come here. No. Ah, dang, still didn't work. Got four fish. Let's try it. All right, come here. I'm not sure if switching to the fish actually does anything. Here we go. Yeah, we got two kitties. Both the same kind. Thank you for the furball. Let's see what this gives me. It gave me a raw salmon. <laughs> well, since I have the fish, I think I can breed them. Let's see. Just push you on over there. They gotta be close. Boink, boink, boink. Okay, feed them both. And we got a little baby! Oh, We got a tiny kitten. Ah, oh, let's let him out. There we go, look at him. <laughs> Just shooting fur balls all over the place. Alright, come with me. Should follow me, right? Yeah, they're coming. Now, I want to make sure they stay safe. Where the heck did they go? Where'd they go? I still hear them. Yeah, animals often don't live long in Minecraft. Especially if they follow you. Oh, are they under the house? Oh, are you trapped down there? Come here. I want to get them all in one place. Yeah, if they follow you and you go adventuring, they're pretty much dead. They'll fall down something and they'll die. I mean, they only have 10 hit points. And they also teleport if they... Ha if you're kind of far away from them and they can't really pathfind to you, they'll teleport. So you can stay there, little kitty. Oh, 
Oh, well, don't hide back there. Come on. There we go. Where's the third one? You under there? You're not stuck in that, like, trough down. Oh, hello. I guess I couldn't pathfind. Come on. You want to get on the bed? Ah, close enough. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to leave them there for now. And sometime in the future, maybe next episode, I'm going to build them their own special cat house. It's going to be beautiful. Well, I feel pretty accomplished. Did a heck of a lot. Made so many machines. Increased our productivity massively. Got some kitties. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, uh, I think I'm going to make that house for the cats.